think one of the ways that California and the West inform and reform the American vision is in its plurality, the multiplicity of voices and visions that have arisen to tell their tales that find forums in places like this, platforms from which they may speak to a wider constituency. I think that in being true to one, we can be true to all, reflecting and reaffirming basic tenets of American life. Murals have a very important place in a community. They can be arts happenings, they're sources of inspiration and education, and the scale of this mural is just outstanding. It's a gorgeous mural. I, I like how the birds and the books and the color and the swirling motion sort of could be seen as fueling or lifting or inspiring the young man who's in the front of the mural. I like how contemplative he is, and I like how in the mural the birds even enter his body or become part of him. Well, I think it's important to honor the poets and writers from Fresno for uh, quite a few reasons. You know, first, just how significant the accomplishments are from the writers here. Uh, you're talking about Pulitzer Prize winners and National Book Award winners and pretty major achievements in the literary world. And I think a mural or any way you can acknowledge them and celebrate them is really not only a tribute to the writers and the poets, but it's a celebration for the people of the city where these writers were doing their work. The mural, sort of a, a public uh, tribute that goes along with the books and the stories that go back decades and that I'm sure will continue on for decades to come. The mural, for one thing, doesn't name a single writer, which is part of that non-competitive thing. I think it was really smart on the part of the artist not to single anybody out, but just make it about poetry itself or fiction too, uh, just reading books. It's uh, acknowledging the act of writing. My house is of brick, but something is blowing it down. The tenement doors burst in and windows slam against the walls of the unrented rooms. A garbage lid is picked up and flung with a shock I half love. And in East Downtown, those who are hungry are cold. Alas, Bartholomew, there is weather in L.A. It's implacable. It's bad news for literature. But suddenly, I'm crazy for any news. The air is full of ions and hard rain with an urge to be let in. And me, I want to go off the deep end to begin story after story with the same failed metaphor of our lives till I make it right. I knew we were coming up on our 30th anniversary of Arte Americas, and I wanted to highlight uh, Diego Rivera as the muralist uh, more than his personality it was really the spirit of his of his artwork and creating artwork that is for the gente, for the people. And uh, as the idea evolved through the help of uh, other collaborators, we uh, decided to go with one big giant mural. So the original intent was to create one big giant mural to work with a muralist named Francisco Vargas who has since passed away, but he was the original collaborator we were working with, and he was very well known throughout Fresno. He worked with a lot of other up-and-coming muralists at that point who are now prominent. We had to rethink the entire idea, and uh, during that time is when the idea came to one of our board members and one of our founders, Nancy Marquez. Nancy saw the side of this nationally registered building. It was important to us in the district because we had been trying to put murals into the district with our little resources and when this opportunity came along it was unique uh, to have this much funds to put behind a big mural. And so all of us thought that the best wall was probably this one on the side of the mat. It was probably also the most difficult wall because the building was owned by the city. That was the first mural that they had ever done with this on one of their buildings. They had to invent a contract with us. They had to 
you know, paved the way for doing this in the future. So we did do some groundbreaking there. The funder was the McClatchy Fresno Art Endowment, and they provide capabilities for an organization like Arte Americas to be able to bring in nationally or internationally recognized artists. That uh, created funding for a local artist, uh, created funding to not only have the internationally acclaimed artist Francisco Letelier, but also to bring in a renowned local artist that is really on many people's radars right now, Mauro Carrera, and uh, to really bring incredible local talent, incredible international talent together for the sake of creating a mural that celebrates creativity, poetry, writing, literature, things that people don't always associate with Fresno, California. So once we started a long, arduous process of trying to figure out what is this mural gonna look like? How do we celebrate poetry and writing? And there were many, many different versions of this. One little piece in the back of one of the designs that was this man with birds flying off him. And uh, for whatever reason, Francisco just took that one individual figure and, and presented that as a singular piece. Ended up being the simplest design in terms of its presentation, but at the same time, it, it, it seemed to be the perfect design that most people gravitated toward. We had various community members, members of the art community, poets, writers, and as it came together, it became the obvious, clear choice for what should go on uh, the side of this building. And because this building has such a history, it was actually the newspaper, the Fresno Bee, and William Soroyan sold the newspapers on the corner here, and the bee housed the stories of the community. That was the theme. And after the Fresno Bee gave the building to the Met to be its museum, the museum housed the stories of the community. And then when the museum moved out and CMAC moved in, CMAC is now housing the stories of the community in the digital age. So the common theme for this building was it houses the stories of our valley, of our region. And so we lighted on it. Should, it should represent the writers. It should represent the stories of the valley. The city slept. The snow turned to ice. The ice to standing pools or rivers racing in the gutters. Then bright grass rose between the thousands of cracked squares and that grass died. I give you back 1948. I give you all the years from then to the coming one. Give me back the moon with its frail light falling across a face. Give me back my young brother, hard and furious, with wide shoulders and a curse for God and burning eyes that look upon all creation and say, you can have it. I started painting murals when I was 17, and I inherited, I inherited at that moment in time, this cultural practice that had been destroyed in my home country that was illegal. People had come out, and I actually was lucky enough to be mentored by somebody who was a few years older than me. My father had died, so I'm already you know, keenly aware of how things are passed on generationally. We've had the generation of my father pretty much destroyed, and I'm like coming into manhood. So that's a keen historical reality that you understand, oh, intergenerational things have to continue. I want to stay firmly in a real news historical account of things, you know, I'm looking for what's real. The things that really bind us together. The things that really bind us together culturally and racially. And so, murals are a fantastic way to address those things. Opportunities to create true collective work. That's family, that's community. Community isn't something that exists just because you and I share commonalities of history or neighborhood or whatever. Community is something about doing things together. And whenever those things done together call for imagination and call for the 
making real something that comes out of our imaginations or our talks, that's that, you know, that's the ticket. So I'm addicted to that as a muralist. I'm addicted to being able to be part of something greater than me because there's no better feeling. And my model of being an artist is always work with the local. It's always work with the local. I don't even want to do it if I don't get to work with the local. Motto was immediately helpful and engaged and in, an interesting person and showed me some of his work. And so I was very lucky in that respect that, that the local artist turned out to be Motto. I think it's just huge that I got to work with somebody coming from that background, from, from Chile. So I think without really Without, without really focusing on the topic, I, I felt this sense of kind of like Pan-American unity. There's a sense of just being secure about who you are, you know, it's like, this is who I am and this is what I do. And, you know, it's, 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 it's my work, you know, it's, it's potent, you know. Um, I think a lot of it had to do with accepting your art form. I like areas that have heavy foot traffic. Um, you know, understanding Fresno and where the foot traffic is, I think is really important. I think the lower income areas and neighborhoods have more foot traffic. But I always think of, you know, me being a kid and walking, you know, whatever situation was, we, we walked somewhere and there it is, there's a mural. You know, as simple, as crazy as it was, it might have been more graffiti, it might have been a Chicano mural, it might have been something that was commercial, but it had an artistic element to it. So I always think of that kid, that kid that's walking to school, you know, and the mom in the morning. Um, or anybody that's just like going to the store to go get, the, to the carniceria to go get, the, you know, their, their food for the day or a any situation like that. Um, and I think of that, that kid and even the adult that's going to look at it and say, like, oh, okay, you know, there's, there's, these are reminders. I wish I could still stay down by the fire at the end of the row and just watch the baby, but... Daddy say I'm a big girl now, not big enough to have my own sack, just only to help pile a cotton in the middle of the row for Mama to put it in her. And I got to keep my jacket button. It's cold. Mama say I move more faster. I wouldn't be feeling it so much. I can't do what her and Daddy do, move fast, move slow and fast together and get a bunch of cotton and keep warm and watch the baby learn. Maybe I get old as Jess Marie, even Ruiz. I can do 100 pounds a day, hold a baby, but she won't need no holding by then. Mama sing, Daddy hum. He picking the roadside Ruiz and Jess Marie, and they pick inside of us. We come early for it's even light, and Mama face be so dark under them white head rags, and by the end of the day, they be dirty with sweat. It be getting on tonight then. Us all be tired. I be thinking about the beans mama cook. Jack come with the bus, daddy take the baby, and mama drag the sack. Fresno is rooted in a lot of grit, work, sweat, struggle. I don't know many people here who don't know or have family who have worked some pretty hard jobs. And so that lends itself, in my opinion, to good writing, a work ethic. There's an aversion to pretension that I've seen in Fresno, uh, both in the people here, but also in most of the writers that I admire. An ability to call things out and name them or see them for what they are in sort of a clear way that I think comes from a working class city. But whether you're talking about writers like John Weinberg from Europe, or some of the Mexican poets, or Mai Dervang, the Hmong American poet. There's a real sense of um, appreciation for work and struggle and, and survival, and the writing that comes out of that. Uh, it's just a perfect place to be a writer. And uh, I, I let people know that, that Fresno is the capital of poetry and of poets. Uh, there's a lot of stories in Fresno. You know, there's a lot of uh, interconnections in Fresno, in particular the Armenians and Chinatown, Japanese uh, community, the Jewish community, and our Mexican, Latino, indigenous communities, uh, so, and, and, and beyond. So, they, so all those communities have uh, fertilized uh, the space uh, of, um, of Fresno. 
So the words, the songs, the sayings, the poems, the references, they're kind of just always in the air. Fresno has attracted a lot of poets, has uh, been a home to poets since day one, and has had a literary tradition that, that's a migrant tradition that goes back uh, as far back as we can trace. And of course, the Japanese uh, tradition of uh, writing the story of the concentration camps. Uh, I think of uh, Lhasa Ni Nada when I think of uh, what's been uh, published. And I'm so happy uh, to, to have all these poets because poets get nourished by reality, by society, by their home, and by fellow poets. So there's much to be, to be said uh, here in Fresno. I stand out on the street and do not go in. That was our agreement at my birth. And for years, I believed that what one end said between us became empty and pure like starlight, and it persisted. I got it all wrong. I wound up believing in words the way a scientist believes in carbon after death. Tonight, I'm talking to you, Father, although it is quiet here in the Midwest where a small wind the size of a wrist wakes the cold again which may be all that's left of you and me. When I left home at 17, I left for good. That pale haze of stars goes on and on, like laughter that has found a final silent shape on a black sky. It means everything it cannot say. Look, it's empty out there and cold, cold enough to reconcile even a father, even a son. When I look at the mural out there and see all those birds, I like to think of some of them as the audience for poetry in Fresno, too. Uh, I ran a reading series at the Fresno Art Museum for 15 years, and the people who came to read always talked about what a terrific audience it was. You know, I read around the country, and um, almost any city that I go to, people will ask me about the Fresno poets or what it's like to write in Fresno, or do you know this poet or that poet? Invariably, I'm asked about uh, Phil Levine, of course, and Juan Felipe Herrera, of course, and people like that. But a lot of the poets that wrote here went somewhere else and now teach, or they work in some uh, area in the literary arts, but they still are very proud of Fresno and talk about it there. You know, Phil taught at NYU after having taught here for many years. Um, I'm thinking about people like Brian Turner, who lives in Florida, and uh, Tim Hernandez, who lived in Texas for a while in Colorado and is now back. But anywhere you go, at least for me, there's sort of a curiosity, but also this sort of shared affinity for Fresno writers. I think the decision to not have the names or the books of these iconic writers can, can be a, a real positive in that having younger writers who are just starting out or just starting to dream or work on their own poems and stories and essays, um, I think it's very fitting for a Fresno mural for a city of half a million, roughly, like Fresno, to have so many poets and, and readers of poetry and, and knowledgeable readers of poetry is pretty unique. And Fresno's poetry community is very supportive, I think. Um, you know, I'm, I'm glad to see the, the audiences widening. I think there's a lot of good young energy, a lot of young writers out there who are hungry for readings and community and um, you know whether it's a public space celebrating the writers like the mural or these reading series that are sprouting up there's now a women writers of color reading series it just continues to expand and um, uh, we have a lot to be grateful for with the community here for me coming from los angeles to arrive in Fresno, to Arte Americas, it's like finding this oasis, because I, I kind of like really feeling and seeing the, the great victory of memory and cultural tenacity 
that exists there. That maybe if you're in Fresno and Arte de Americas is a kind of just constant fixture in your geography, you don't really see what a beautiful, uh, you know, like treasure, cultural treasure it is. As a muralist and as an artist, one of the things that I admire Arte Americas for is that it's a Chicano Latino organization, yet it continues to serve its community, but it exports culture to all the other communities in Fresno. To create a visual representation of the impact that Arte Americas has made in 30 years here in Fresno and in downtown Fresno, that was this, this, this real drive is to really refre reflect beautifully on this Latino cultural center and all that has gone into making it a significant place. There was just a, a, so much pride because it, this is the pride not even in, in my feeling like ah, I've done this, you know, like I, I uh, had some, some part in this. I'm, I'm representing this, this opportunity to be able to, to weave in our local artists and to celebrate them, to say look at, look at what our muralists are creating to celebrate other art forms and they do it for Fresno. So I'm glad we have this mural here. It, it kind of brings back a great tradition, writing and murals and painting. They're part of who we are. We all need creative space. Without that creative space, we become silent. You know, there's a saying about the quality of, of your life is measured often by the moments that take your breath away. And I think the quality of life in this community has a wonderful opportunity in this breathtaking mural to be inspired. People coming together from all walks of life that may never have, have joined together uh, in an arts experience. To experience something like that firsthand is, is a rarity in our life today. So I, I really am a believer in art in public places and I'm looking forward to this mural inspiring our community for many, many years to come.